sure to enter the special contest that is being offered by Game Blast through a partnership with Nubifier Media. That's linked up right now and at the end. Good prizes, and it costs nothing to enter. Hello, YouTubers. This is Nubifier. Today is the 21st of May, 2023, and for the next 48 hours, until the 23rd of May, is the second event at the Convention Center at Area 18. An in-game convention where you can free-fly Star Citizen, but all players are able to test the usable ships from that day's manufacturer. Don't forget to tour the fleet, as it's also part of the celebration. With the celebration is a push to sell ships, so you can acquire the perfect addition to your fleet. As I said, today is Aegis. This is a smaller show than IAE in the fall, as its focus is military in nature, because Aegis primarily makes warships, all, except one, flight-ready Aegis ships are available to test. And most will be available to buy either as a standalone ship, a CCU from another ship, or a war bond CCU for chaining. All ships bought today by default will have at least 10 years insurance. Expect to see special CCUs with war bond options that will add 10 year insurance on whatever they're applied to, unless that ship already has LTI. The best insurance option when there are several will always work to your favor and be the best. Don't forget that the Fury is sold with LTI, so you could buy it on war bond and then use the CCU system to upgrade to your new Aegis ship with LTI instead of 10 years. Here are the flight-ready Aegis ships. The Aegis Avenger Stalker, a modified version of the Avenger catering to bounty hunters. Be careful with this ship as it's had its cargo space taken up by special cells. Bounty mechanics are not fleshed out and neither uh, is modularity. So this ship, despite being flight-ready for eight years, is not what I would choose as my only ship. <laughs> Aegis Avenger Titan. This one is the best. A former patrol ship with its added cargo capacity for light hauling. This does get 100% blessing for me as your only ship. If you only had one ship, the Titan would be a fantastic choice. And there's also the Titan Renegade, which is the same ship, but with a different loadout and some paint. Blue and yellow paint. It's actually quite pretty. The Aegis Avenger Warlock. It's a dirty fighter because its EMP when used properly can just time out an enemy, making it easy to apply a ton of damage in a very short period of time. The EMP in lore is part of the bounty hunting gameplay where you may like to capture the target alive. Lately though, the EMP has only one purpose and that is to immobilize something before you kill it. It's a variant of the Avenger platform. The Aegis Eclipse, a pretty and sleek stealth bomber armed with a pair of very, very large torpedoes. And when stealth is added properly, it's likely you'll never know what hits you. The Aegis Gladius, an aging but agile light fighter boasting mid-range armament, a community favorite with a lot of history. It was said that this will be your main fighter in Squadron 42, so it's nice to keep one in your fleet and brush up with it from time to time in AC. This ship is the reward for Gladius and Gold, which is given when you get 10 referrals. Get a total of 10 friends to join the game and spend $45 using your code, and you get a Gladius with lifetime insurance. The Aegis Gladius Valiant, it's like the Renegade, a special edition Gladius with a different loadout and some different paint. I think it's orange and green. The Aegis Hammerhead, a multi-crew corvette dotted with an array of manned turrets, and it's very, very heavy firepower. I don't really see this having a functioning game yet. Uh, I will expect to see it running close escort to larger ships in the future. The Aegis Reclaimer is not on the list today because it's a salvage ship. The Aegis Redeemer, dotted with turrets and missiles. The Redeemer is a powerful fighting gunship capable of holding its own in combat with an impressive weapons payload. The Aegis Retaliator Bomber, a long-range multi-crew anti-capital ship bomber. It's very pretty and eventually should be modular allowing for all sorts of mission types. The Sabre, favoring agility over durability, the Sabre is light, sleek and deadly. It's pretty but that silhouette has been seen as a pancake target. If your enemy gets into a top-down or bottom-up attitude, that's all they see, is a disc. Big target. Its main feature is stealth, which is still missing from the game, and I would expect the Sabre to become much more important when that happens. It has four similar hard points, which allows you to choose a very smart mono loadout. The Aegis Sabre Comet is the same ship with scatter guns and a blue, black, and white camouflage pattern. Pretty. Whatever, don't buy that one, buy the normal Sabre. The Aegis Vanguard Warden, a long-range heavy fighter with a manned turret. This was one of my favorite ships many, many patches ago. A large single middle-mounted hardpoint and four size two. A bit slow against quick fighters, but able to take on much larger ships, and it's still a real threat when used properly. You have the Harbinger, a powerful bomber version of the Warden, and you have the Hoplite, which is a long-range dropship based on the Warden. And finally, the Vanguard Sentinel. It has some specialized e-warfare gear that will eventually have a game loop. Use the Warden for now. It's good. 
There is a specialized ship sail sold in waves today, the Iteris P and the Javelin. Three waves, wave 1 is 4 p.m. UTC, wave 2 is 12 a.m. UTC, and wave 3 is 8 a.m. UTC. Please look out for my info dump on the new Fury. Please look out for some discounted game packages with 10-year insurance. You may be interested and able to replace your current low insurance ship for a 10-year insurance ship, or like I said, start with a Fury and CCU to the ship that you want with lifetime insurance. That's pretty much all I feel I need to say about today. Go check out the convention. If you're new and you don't understand the terms Warbond, CCU, or LTI token, please go and check out Nubifire Discord, where we have a dedicated channel and great citizens willing to help. Thank you very much for spending your time with me. Fly safe, and I'll see you at the show.